Charlie Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over how to calculate pressure altitude and density altitude. Why should you care? Well, number one, your pilot operating handbook for the aircraft you're flying, most of its uh, performance characteristics are based on pressure altitude and density altitude, not MSL altitude or AGL altitude that you may be flying on a cross-country flight, but again, pressure altitude and density altitude. So it's important you know what they are for the field elevations that you're uh, taking off and landing at, as well as your en route altitude that you may be cruising at. Uh, second of all, it's important that you understand the basics in terms of how to calculate this in the event you don't have a, uh, an app or a computer in front of you to go online and to get these numbers uh, that way. So with just some basic understanding here using field elevation, temperature, and the barometric pressure at that particular airport, uh, that you may be taking off or landing at, you can very quickly, uh, by the back of an envelope, you know, come up with some pressure altitude density altitudes to determine how your aircraft's going to perform. So follow along in this video, and I'll show you how to get these numbers very quickly. Okay, how to calculate pressure altitude and density altitude. Well, first of all, we need to understand what the international standard atmosphere is. Uh, the International Civil Aviation Organization established years ago the international standard atmosphere, and what that translates into is that an international standard atmosphere at sea level is 20.92 inches of mercury or 1013.25 millibars of pressure uh, with a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And aircraft's performance are based on this standard atmosphere. Uh, aircraft's performance charts located in the aircraft's pilot operating handbook factor in two terms associ associated with the ISA that we really need to be aware of pressure altitude and density altitude. So as pilots, we must know what the current pressure altitude and density altitude are to properly interpret these charts to determine our aircraft's performance. In regards to the aircraft uh, pilot operating handbook performance charts, many of the aircraft's performance charts um, are based on the pilot knowing what the pressure altitude and density altitude is at the airport so that they intend to take off and land from, as well as the en route altitude on their cruise. So aircraft performance that's affected by pressure altitude and density altitude include takeoff and landing performance, engine performance, climb performance, cruise performance, range performance, glide performance. And there's a couple other ones in there as well. Consequently, we need to determine as pilots what the pressure altitude and density altitude is for the airport field elevations that we intend to use, takeoff and landings, as well as for the in route altitudes we plan to fly between those intended airports. When we're filling out a nav log, for example, we put in 5,500 feet or 6,500 feet or 5,000 or 6,000, depending if we're flying VFR, IFR. Those may be our MSL altitudes that we're putting in, but they don't represent a pressure altitude, in route pressure altitudes. We need to figure those uh, numbers, pressure altitude and density altitude, to be able to use uh, the performance charts uh, appropriately. The other thing we need to keep in mind is the standard lapse rate for the international standard atmosphere. As we ascend in altitude, every thousand feet we go up in altitude um, with a standard lapse rate, the barometric pressure will drop one inch of mercury and the temperature will drop two degrees Celsius. On a standard atmospheric day at sea level, the barometric pressure is 29.92 inches and temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, as I show in this uh, blue column of air over here on the right. You'll see at sea level, the pressure is 29.92 inches and 15 degrees C. And every thousand feet we go up in altitude, we lose that inch of mercury and the temperature drops two degrees Celsius, again, with a standard lapse rate. Um, you notice also at 7,500, the barometric pressure is 22.42 inches of mercury and the temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So on a standard atmospheric day, you get up around 7,500 7, feet, you're uh, at freezing altitude and need to start thinking about icing, it's usually before you even get to that 7,500 feet. So how do we calculate pressure altitude? Well, first of all, pressure altitude is the true altitude corrected for non-standard pressure, where true altitude is the actual altitude above uh, sea level. You can see in this chart here on the right, or this picture on the right, we may be flying at the same pressure altitude, let's say 5,000 feet, but based on the temperature, our true altitude above the Earth could be lower. And that's when you factor in the density altitude, which we'll get to a little bit later. So to calculate pressure altitude, we need to first subtract the current local altimeter setting from 29.92 inches of mercury. We'll multiply that result by 1,000, 
and then we'll add the result to the field elevation or the true altitude or flight elevation uh, for us to estimate in route pressure altitude. So let's do an example, calculating pressure altitude. If we look at uh, Laconia Airport, this is coming from e6bx.com's website, just a screenshot in time, and then it's got pressure altitude, density altitude, it's got everything here for you. Uh, so if you don't want to calculate these numbers by hand, you could go to websites like this, or maybe your app has it on your phone, uh, an E6B tool may have it, but it's also important you have some basic understanding how to do the math. So let's go ahead and calculate um, pressure altitude based on the data in this table. So again, subtract the current local altimeter setting from 29.82, which is a mercury. If we look at the, with the pointer, the current altimeter setting is 30.09. So 29.92 minus 30.09 equals minus 0.17. Next, multiply that result by 1,000. 0.17 times 1,000 equals minus 170. And then step three, add the result to the field elevation, which is right here, 545 feet. And we come up with 375 feet. And lo and behold, that just happens to be what the pressure altitude is uh, from e6bx.com's website. So there's the, the math, not, not too difficult. We'll do one more example. So here we are in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Um, we're going to calculate it again, the, the pressure altitude. We again, we're going to subtract the current local altimeter setting from 29.92 inches. The altimeter setting is 29.87. So 29.92 minus 29.87 is 0.05. Multiply that result by 1,000, we get 50. Add that result to the field elevation of 167. And 167 plus 50 equals 217. And lo and behold, there's your pressure altitude. That simple to calculate pressure altitude. Now the next part of the equation, how to calculate density altitude. So density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. So density altitude's formula for calculating it manually is the pressure altitude plus 120 times the outside air temperature minus the isotemperature for the altitude, pressure altitude we're flying at. So to calculate density altitude, step one, determine via interpolation what the isotemp should be for your field elevation or en route altitude. Number two, subtract the isotemperature from the outside air temperature. Multiply step two by 120. Add steps three result to the previously calculated pressure altitude. All right, so let's do an example, calculating density altitude. So we're gonna use the same screenshot we did before, uh, and we're gonna calculate density altitude. So first, we want to determine via interpolation what the ISO temperature should be for our field elevation. Um, we know the field elevation is 545 feet, so solving for x, 545 feet divided by 1,000 um, equals x over 2 degrees Celsius, because we know we drop 2 degrees Celsius every 1,000 feet we go up. Um, so if we solve for x, which is the ISO temperature that we should have for a standard day at 545 feet, it all works out to 15 minus 1.09 equals 13.91 degrees Celsius. That is what the temperature should be for a standard atmosphere. So now we're going to subtract this ISO temperature from the outside air temperature. So the outside air temperature is 13 degrees Celsius. So we're going to subtract minus 13.91 ISO temp from that outside air temperature, and we get a minus 0.91. We're going to multiply that by 120, and then we're going to come up with 109.2, that's negative, and then we're going to add this step three, uh, to the previously calculated pressure altitude. Well, we calculated pressure altitude uh, on the previous slide, uh, 375 feet, plus this minus 109.2, and we come out to basically 266 feet, and lo and behold, that's the density altitude, and it matches uh, what uh, e6bx.com put out. Okay, we're going to do one more example. This one's going to be out of Boston, uh, so we're going to calculate the density altitude. First, we're going to, uh, via interpolation, find out what the ISO temperature should be for the field elevation at Boston, which is 13 feet. Uh, solving for X, which is uh, going to be 13 feet over 1,000, is equal to X over 2 degrees Celsius. Uh, X is equal to the ISO temperature. And so at 13 feet, um, it's equal to 15 minus 0 0.026, or 14.974 degrees Celsius. So not much of a drop in, in, in the temperature, but again, we're only 13 feet above sea level. We'll subtract this ISO temperature from the outside air temperature. The, ice, the, ice, the outside air temperature was 
17.2 degrees Celsius minus the 14.974, and we get 2.26. We're going to multiply that result of 2 by 120, and we get 267.12. And the last step is we're going to add step 3 result to the previously calculated pressure altitude. Well, we can see the pressure altitude was minus 107, so minus 107, uh, right from the um, pressure altitude table above, plus the 267 equals 160 feet, or roughly 100, they show 157, and I believe that is because there's some humidity factored into the way it's calculated uh, more precisely. But for the purposes of, for a pilot um, and using the performance charts, uh, the, the equation that we use for density altitude works just fine. So that's what's involved in calculating pressure altitude and density altitude. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video. <music>